Welcome back. SOLIDWORKS 2025. Let's talk about parameters. So as mentioned in the previous uh, videos, I mentioned that this is a parametric software. Ideal for 3D modeling, mechanical parts, and uh, also products. So when we talk about parameters, let me go to the search on command, command search and type equations here at the top. As you can see, we have equations. Let me drag it in this zone so I can access it easier next time. So when we click on equations, we can have uh, some options in here. So those are filters, but uh, the ones that I would like to show you are the ones that are related with dimensions. So dimension view it's, it's called yeah, in these filters. So I have already some parameters and these parameters, if you already uh, took a look to the first video, we created a rectangle on the sketch with 150 by 80, and then we extruded up to 90 millimeters. And then we did a fillet of 10 millimeters. Well, there you have the parameters. SOLIDWORKS by default is going to go creating those parameters and assigning them to a different uh, sketch or uh, operation. Okay, so those parameters can be uh, created. You can create your own parameters as global variables. You can uh, then use simple math as when you are on Excel for make them uh, to work. For example, let's do something simple. So I will say that I want this dimension to be always half of this uh, first dimension of 150. So as you saw, SOLIDWORKS did the math for me. But if I change again this one, let's say 140, it is not changing. So where is the parametric thing? It is when you uh, hit one second. Whoop. Okay. When you hit the equal sign and then click on the parameter that you want to parameterize, and then, for example, divide it by two. And now it is going to have the formula instead of having the value. The value is going to show here at the column for values, but not in here. So if I hit again, 160, for example, hit enter, my value for the dimension two is changing as well. So this is great. So we can click, now that we have changed the parameter, we can click here in this um, green, red light, and the model is going to update. But our way to have it is by clicking on the automatically rebuild, and it is going to change as we hit the different values. So there, there, there are uh, options for you to play with. Okay, so let's go to 150. Let's click OK in here. And now let's briefly talk about the Model 3. The Model 3 is going to be uh, important to keep it uh, organized because you are going to have operations and the order of those operations are going to affect the final result and the product. So that being said, there are also a feature that is important that you know that is basically this uh, blue line that is in here is if you take your cursor close to it, you will see that you have a hand. When you see the hand, you click and then drag at the point at where you want to, let's say, temporarily suppress the model. So that's one of the things that makes the parametric um, modeling easier uh, if you make your uh, model tree on the right way and most uh, clear way that I'm going to show <laughs> in this in this video. Okay, so as you saw, I'm suppressing this operation. 
by just dragging this thing. And if I pull it down, I will have the thing um, again back, right? So let me modify this uh, rounder, sorry, fillet. So I will deselect some of them. Yeah, so let me deselect this one and this one here. So I got this face, not as this one, it is having this. Okay, very good. So let me show you how your model can be affected by just changing the order of the model tree. So if I add the chamfer, I will pick one of the elements. Uh, let's check, uh, I don't have full preview. It's interesting. Okay, yeah, yeah, oh, I have it. So that the model was, I was doing the model with a huge chamfer. So it there was no preview because there were no solution. Okay, so now that we have the chamfer, we click on the check and we can see a constant chamfer all around the, the geometry just by clicking in one edge. And that was done because I'm uh, having the tangent propagation. I could also remove it and I will have this result. I will take it back to uh, tangent propagation. There you go. And now let's see the result from changing the order in between these two operations. So if I take this fillet over the, um, sorry, if I take the chamfer over the fillet, this is the result that I got. If I change them again, I will have the constant um, chamfer. And this is simply as simple, as simple as because the, the operations order in this model tree are going to be affect or affecting the thing. So let me suppress for a second the fillet. And as you can see, my model is now show, showing this. Interesting, right? But if I pull it down, I can see that I have my fillets back. And once again, well, you know the already the result from uh, having the fillet before the chamfer. And this also is true for any other operation in the model tree. One recommendation is always to have all the uh, operations that add material first, then the ones that remove materials, like uh, a cutted extrude, a shredded cut, sorry, a hole or a revolved cut. And then add other operations like uh, patterns that we are going to cover in the next videos, mirrors, drafts, uh, ribs, and shells. And at the end, let's add the chamfers and the uh, fillets. So if you want to see more uh, advanced things, you probably are going to like to go to this other video.